How much does it really cost to learn to fly? I get this question all the time. I decided to make a quick video on this just to show why it's so difficult to give you a straight answer. There are a lot of variables. So I decided to make a video, show the low end and the high end, and maybe you can figure out for yourself how much you're going to be spending depending on where you are, your location, who you fly with, what kind of airplane you fly, and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going into the part 61 versus part 141, and are you on a career track, or are you just doing it recreationally? All this video is for is, is for those who are wondering, how much can I expect to pay to learn to get my private pilot certificate and go from there? Why is there not a straight answer? Well, we're gonna cover a few factors. All right, one is how much does the airplane cost? That's a very widely ranging number, all right? So you can go from, and I'm gonna use a Cessna 150 as an example. I know for a fact there's places in the country, even in California, all over the country, that you can rent a 150 for 110 bucks an hour wet. Now what wet means, uh, most of you know, but if you don't know, that means that the price of fuel is included in the airplane rental rate. If you go and you fire it up and you fly for an hour and you come back and you ended up being in the airplane for 1.2 hours, they're going to charge you $110 an hour times 1.2 and that's how you pay. Another variable cost is flight instructor. It's just such a range and depending on where you are and what's their expertise, what's their, what's their experience, you know like the airplane can go from a 150 being $110 an hour to let's say an SR20 being $355 an hour flight instructor being $50 an hour to flight instructors who are $175 an hour. All these numbers are based on people and airplanes that I know for a fact are out there. It's November 2023. I double checked all the numbers before making this video just to make sure that the numbers are what I was thinking and they are. There's a flight school in California that has $110 an hour 150. There's a flight school in California that has a $355 an hour Cirrus SR20. There are flight instructors that charge $50 an hour, and there's flight instructors that charge $175 an hour, and everything in between on all the planes and all the instructors in between. So obviously, those are two very big variables. Another way I'm gonna lay this out to help, hopefully help you understand how some people do their pricing. Because some people, they're not really scam artists, but they're not really wrong, but they're not being truthful, okay? So what I mean by that is, I'm going to give you two prices here. I'm going to give you the minimum number the FAA requires, which is 40 hours of flight training. But the national average is 75 hours-ish. It's within there. So that's almost double. So right there, if you're talking about just airplane and instructor alone, you can almost double the price for the same airplane and the same instructor. Then you got miscellaneous stuff like... Um, you know, what, what are you going to, you're going to buy your charts, you're going to buy a headset, how much does the uh, examiner cost if you go to do your check ride with the, D, the DPE. So I'm going to cover all this stuff, but I'm just going to lay out some examples really quick. So that's how I'm going to structure it. There are real numbers from real people I know and real airplanes that I know that are out there right now. And I'm going to give you the 40 hour minimum budget and I'm going to give you the 75 hour national average. Now remember, the national average means that people go over that and go under that. So I'm just giving you a target. And I hope this video not only explains why it's hard to give you a straight answer, but also maybe give you some things to factor in yourself. All right. Um, some people will go into, well, what's your cost of living? How much does it cost to get to the airport and back? I'm not doing any of that. I'm just trying to give you some food for thought because my, my point in making all these videos is to inspire you to go do your private pilot uh, certificate and your training and Follow your passion, follow your dream. It's extremely rewarding. Even if you're just doing it recreationally, if you take it into a career, I mean, either way, it's extremely rewarding. So let's start with this. Let's say that you're gonna do it in the minimum time required by the FAA, which is 40 hours. Full disclaimer, I had to just assume a CFI amount as well. So what I did just to make the numbers easy is I figured you're gonna spend 40 hours with the CFI as, long as, uh, as, as well as your 40 hours with your airplane. Okay, now I know some people will come at me saying, well, that's way off. Again, it's a variable. It's kind of the point of this video, it's a variable. So if you're gonna spend 40 hours minimum time in your airplane, then you're probably gonna spend 40 hours with your CFI. Even though some of that time in the airplane solo, you're not gonna have your CFI, but you're probably gonna spend some time with your CFI outside of flying for ground school. So it's just the best I could do to give you some numbers. So let's say that you're gonna go the 
least expensive route in my example. You're going to fly a 150. So you're going to go rent this 150 for 110 bucks an hour, and you're going to find one of the uh, least expensive instructors that I know that are out there right now, and you're going to spend 50 bucks an hour, let's just say. So if you spend 40 hours on it with a $110 airplane, and you spend 40 hours with a CFI, here's how that breaks down. So your 40 hours in a 150 at $110 an hour comes out to 4,400 bucks. Your instructor, 50 bucks an hour for 40 hours is going to be 2,000 bucks. All right. So another thing I did is I threw in some miscellaneous. Let's just figure it's another thousand bucks for you know check ride, course material, and stuff like that. Now of course, that's another variable. Again, proving my point in this whole video. I've paid $500 for DPEs and I've paid $2,200 for a check ride. So now, I believe that the check rides for private pilots are under the 1,000 mark still. They're around 650, give or take. But it, again, it depends on where you are. So I just figured let's throw an extra $1,000 in there for good measure for your check ride for materials. And if you want to buy your own headset and all that, that's that's fine. And those are also wildly um, on both ends of the spectrum of the price range. I've seen headsets out there for a couple hundred bucks, and you can spend you know well over $1,000 for a headset. So that's up to you. Are you going to buy an iPad? Or are you not? That kind of stuff. Just in that, just in those couple sentences, I got you up two or three thousand dollars right there. So there you go. There's some more of your answer of how come I can't give you a straight answer when you ask how much does it cost to learn to fly? Anyway, one hundred ten dollars an hour for the one hundred and fifty plus fifty dollars an hour for your CFI and absolute minimum time, you're going to spend seventy four hundred bucks on your private pilot license. And of course, that's what that extra thousand th thrown in there. Let's say that you're going to do your minimum time with the more expensive instructor in the more expensive airplane. So $175 an hour for your instructor and $355 an hour for your SR20 that you might want to learn to fly in. Okay, you add those together, you're looking at $14,200 just for the plane and that's $7,000 just for your instructor. Again, that's 40 hours and 40 hours. That adds up if you were to get it minimum time, 40 hours, $22,200. I just gave you a price from $7,400 all the way to $22,200 for the same certificate, right? So it's just who did you fly with and what did you fly in? All right. So now let's move this conversation over to the national average of 75 hours, give or take. But I'm going to use 75 because I'm trying to give you some good numbers. You're going to go rent that Cessna 150 for $110 an hour for 75 hours. That's eight thousand two hundred and fifty bucks. All right, you're gonna rent that uh, CFI for fifty dollars an hour for seventy-five hours. That's three thousand seven hundred fifty. All right, so let's add those together, and you come up with thirteen thousand bucks. So national average seventy-five hours. You're in a one hundred and fifty with a relatively inexpensive instructor. Thirteen thousand bucks. All right. Now let's go for that Cirrus SR twenty example again. Now you're looking at seventy-five hours in that. That's an expensive airplane at 355 bucks an hour. So just the airplane alone for that 75 hours is going to be 26,625 bucks. That's a lot of money, but if that's how you want to do it, no harm, no foul. Now that CFI that's $175 an hour for that same 75 hours is going to cost you 13,125 bucks. So let's add them together. $40,750 is what you're going to pay to do your private pilot certificate in a Cirrus SR20 that's being that's 355 bucks an hour with an instructor that's 175 bucks an hour. Now, I'm not harping on this. I'm not saying $50 an hour is too cheap by the way, $175 an hour. I'm not saying that's too expensive. And I also want you to know that I don't think that cheaper instructors are better and I don't think that more expensive instructors are better. It really depends. That's a variable I can't hold your hand through. Um, I've worked with some stellar $50 an hour instructors, and I've worked with some stellar $175 an hour instructors. And I've worked with bad on both ends as well. Sometimes you can factor in, if someone's charging you $175 an hour, they probably have a lot of experience. It's what they, they really have a passion for making sure you're going to get through efficiently and effectively. So even though you're paying way more, it might actually end up saving you money in the long run because they really know how to efficiently get you through the, the whole uh, course. So consider that too. The best thing I can give you as far as advice for instructors is interview them. You're going to be spending a lot of time and money with this person. Make sure that you jive with them. 
You're going to be sitting right next to them for a long time. You're going to be sitting, sitting in a room for a long time. You add on the stress that they're going to be telling you what to do constantly and correcting your behavior and trying to teach you and train you. That can bring out different funky attitudes sometimes. So make sure that you find an instructor that you jive with, right? Find someone who you think you can stand paying a few thousand bucks and sitting in the same room or very close quarters with for a while. And uh, definitely find someone who you respect and you trust because it's really difficult to go beyond, at least at first, it's difficult for you to go beyond what your instructor can give you. So just to recap, someone says, how much does it cost to learn to fly? I now you know why I can say, well, I don't know, $7,400 to $40,000. Wow, right? Wow. So anyway, more things to consider. I'm going to do more videos on this later, on this kind of stuff. And of course, if you're in a career track, there's things you can do to save money. There's all kinds of things you can do to save money. Uh, a lot of it is how often do you train? How close are you to the airport sometimes? Because you can just go and hang out. Um, are you, you know, are you driving a long way to the airport? How many days a week are you flying? Are you studying a lot at home? Are you relying on your instructor to make all your progress for you? Or are you meeting them in the middle? Or are you, um, are you really putting it in, putting your all in to make this happen? Because a lot of times an instructor can only drag you so far and you got to help them push. My recommendation, by the way, would be budget for the national average and then just see if you can come in under that, right? A little sidebar. You don't have to learn in a super fancy airplane just because that's the latest, greatest, cool thing. You can learn the basics in anything. You can learn the basics in a super fancy airplane. You just got to really concentrate on it. But if you fly something like a little old Satabria where it doesn't have anything but a few gauges up front, you kind of don't have a choice but to learn the basics. And the way I, uh, I equate it for people is, let's say you're learning to drive. You can go learn to drive in anything, right? Um, but if you're going to learn to drive in a manual transmission, you can usually hop into an automatic and drive. If you're going to learn to drive an automatic and you want to go hop into a manual transmission car, sometimes it takes a little bit of extra effort and some learning. So I tell people that the old school basic airplanes, especially the tail wheels, those are the manual transmissions of airplanes. And, you know, you can, you can go anywhere from there. So take that with a grain of salt. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let us know if you did. I want to do a lot more of them. Sorry I got a little long-winded. Um, I definitely want this to be an inspiring video for people, not a discouraging video. I just want you to know the facts. I don't want you to go in somewhere expecting to pay 7400 bucks and it ends up being twenty grand, and you felt lied to right in the beginning. When you can just go in, punch in a few numbers, now you know the national average. You can pick what airplane and what instructors, and uh, consider all that. Good luck. Fly safe.